Hey everyone, welcome to Smart Course, the go-to place for authoritative information and strategies for special needs and learning disorders, especially ADHD. We'll soon be sharing the knowledge of world leading experts in the field during our ADHD and middle school summit in August. Today, we'll be discussing how children with ADHD can be impacted by social anxiety. It is really common for children diagnosed with ADHD to struggle with anxiety at the same time. Let's see some numbers first. CDC estimates that up to 30% of children with ADHD also have an anxiety disorder. Current research has found comorbidity between ADHD and anxiety reaching 25% in many populations. Among all of the anxiety types, social anxiety is an important one. 2 to 13 percent of the U.S. population experiences social anxiety. It is the most common type of anxiety disorder in teenagers, usually starting in childhood or early adolescence. Some evidence suggests that it occurs more frequently in children with ADHD. Then, what is a social anxiety disorder? There are two main types of social anxiety disorder. One focuses on performance, with kids worrying about things like speaking in public or trying out for a team. The other one involves social situations in general, such as going to school, eating in public, using public restrooms, and so on. Children with social anxiety may experience physical symptoms, such as shaking, sweating, flushing, and shortness of breath. They may express their anxiety by asking, what if I do something stupid, or what if I say the wrong thing? Young children sometimes throw tantrums cry, or experience other anxiety symptoms when confronted with a situation that terrifies them. With social anxiety disorder, one knows their fear is unreasonable, but still feel powerless to control it. Why would ADHD children be more vulnerable? First, ADHD symptoms themselves can increase social stress level for children, such as frequently interrupting, blurting out, fidgeting, and forgetfulness. If children are constantly reprimanded for talking out of turning school, they are more likely to experience higher stress and low self-esteem. Second, children with ADHD also struggle with emotional regulation. ADHD often causes kids to become flooded with positive and negative emotions, which makes them difficult to manage in the moment because they might be struggle to make sense of their thoughts and become caught in the cycle of anxious thinking. ADHD can be impacted by social anxiety disorder, interfering with a child's ability to make friends and participate in social activities. It will cause problems in relationships, cause them to miss school or work, or cause them to get lower grades because of their fears of answering questions or talking in class. Children with social anxiety often experience depression. Some research has shown that Children with social anxiety disorder are six times more likely to have dysthymia, a kind of persistent depressive disorder, or another mood disorder. So, what can parents do to avoid these problems? There are no clear or published guidelines on how to treat co-occurring ADHD and social anxiety disorder. Only after your doctor determines how your child's anxiety functions can they develop the best treatment plan to meet your child's needs. For example, if their anxiety and ADHD are independent for one another, the doctor may treat both conditions simultaneously, or they may decide to treat whichever condition is causing the most problems first before moving on to the other condition. If your child's anxiety is the result of ADHD, the doctor may treat your child with medications as this may reduce their anxiety symptoms. Common medication used to treat ADHD include Ritalin and Stratera. While medication has historically been the first line of ADHD treatment, many people also benefit from non-medication therapists, which is especially true for children who are also living with an anxiety disorder. Cognitive behavioral therapy would be one of them. It can address many of the underlying challenge of both ADHD and social anxiety disorder, as well as the complicated symptoms that overlap between them. The goal of doing CBT is providing techniques and practice for controlling anxiety independently. Exposure therapy is one type of CBT. 
It is a specific technique your therapist might use. During the therapy, your child will work with the therapist together to gradually expose them to anxiety. So they can develop a healthy coping mechanism and finally, the situations elicit less fear. Besides getting support from professionals, parents themselves can also provide help for their child. Try to figure out what behaviors might be increasing or decreasing their social anxiety and if there is a lack of confidence or motivation. Parents can reframe their social life, which is important during the time of COVID-19. Involve your children in more non-academic activities, such as baking, cooking, learning to play an instrument, or reading a series of books. Define social distance into them, and list high-risk and low-risk activities, especially for your child. Social distancing might provide a special but ideal social situation, especially for children with both ADHD and social anxiety disorder. Lastly, a co-occurring diagnosis of social anxiety disorder can be a lifelong reality for someone with ADHD. It's okay to feel overwhelmed. Just take a deep breath and know that with the right support, you can manage both ADHD and social anxiety and thrive in life. In our upcoming video, we'll be discussing how ADHD is related to other mental health disorders. For an expert curated list of resources from our past summit and videos, in particular, ADHD Max, ADHD and Anxiety Symptom Checklist for Children, please visit the link in the description. To make sure you are as prepared as you can be, I want you to hit the notification bell below and join our newsletter because we'll be sharing much more resources on how to help your family cope better with ADHD, both at school and at home. If you like this video, please don't forget to like it and let us know what you like or would you like to see more of in the comments below. The more people like, subscribe, click the bell, and comment, the more people will see this kind of content on YouTube, and we know some people could really use the help. If you haven't watched our previous videos about the best music for the ADHD brand, click the annotation on the top right of your screen to watch those videos. We'll be sharing information about upcoming videos on this YouTube channel and exclusive deals on our newsletter. So again, hit the notification bell and the subscribe button under this video and sign up for our newsletter using the link in the description to get early access to and exclusive deals on our resources. For even more specific information, step-by-step guides, and access to professionals who can help you through this process, please sign up for our online course or upcoming summit in August using the links in the description. We'll share tons of expert value resources on parenting and education for different able kids, just like kids with ADHD. So make sure to check out our previous videos and subscribe to our channel to receive notifications for videos to come. As always, I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you for watching and see you soon.